Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, we are going to discuss about Databricks Volume. We are going to see what is Databricks Volume, why do we use it, how we can use it, and we are going to see the implementation part as well. So let's move ahead. But again, before moving ahead, I do recommend all of you guys to connect with me on LinkedIn as well as on Instagram. And I'm going to leave the link in the description box. Also, in, uh, in case you guys need any technical consultation like resume review or any technical query or maybe offer selection, then in that case, you guys can connect with me on the top mate as well. So let's move ahead and talk about the volume. So volume is nothing but it's a place where your team can upload and store the data. Now this data is usually a CSV file or an image file or maybe any structured or unstructured data format. So if you want to store, uh, let's say an Excel file, an image, a CSV, a JSON, all of that can be stored at a single place within the Unity catalog and that is called as a volume. Databricks will provide you a simplified UI the user interface that you already have, you can use that or you can use the APIs to upload the file and explore the contents within the volume. You can also, once you have loaded the data into the volume, once you have loaded the files or images into the volume, you can specifically give access to a particular volume to a set of user. So if you want to say that I want to give my marketing group access to this particular volume, you can do that. And if you don't want to give uh, access to the marketing group and you want to give access to let's say operations team you can do that so this is a very powerful um, option in case you want to have files and you want to manage the access of that file as well so you can upload the libraries you can upload you know the files images you can track those files you know the access to that files as well and on top of that of course you guys can control the access to it as well so now, um, remember that in the volume, you can store both structured as well as an unstructured data. So it's not like that you have to store always uh, structured data and it is not used for tabular data set. Okay. So for example, for tabular data set, you will always go and store it in form of a table, but volumes are used for structured or unstructured non tabular data set. It, it, you cannot create a table in the volume from a volume. You can create a table, but within a volume you cannot store any table i'm sure i'll show you that uh, right now in a while in the same video itself and remember that a volume can be managed or external so just like you have delta tables managed delta tables and external delta de uh, delta tables in the similar way you have volumes as well which can be managed or external a managed volume is the one in the unity catalog where you don't have to specify the external location so if you're not specifying any external storage location it's a managed volume so whenever you create a volume there's an option to provide the external location so if you are not providing that then it's a managed volume otherwise it's a external volume so it's pretty clear and i'll show you uh, on the portal as well on how does it looks like so let's go to the portal as well to check this out so here i am in the databricks if i go to the catalog on the left hand side you guys will see that i have multiple catalogs over here i have been creating a lot of videos on that so if you look at this we have something called a quick start catalog let me just randomly open this catalog i have these schemas inside it dbt bbd now this is the one which i was using for uh, creating the playlist on dbt in case you guys are interested in the dbt you guys can go ahead and watch this playlist as well so now if you see over here there is no volume there's nothing like a volume which is mentioned over here but now when you go to a schema dbt underscore bbd you can see it mentions in the overview how many tables you have how many volume model and function you have so right now we have zero volume so if i go and click on this create option at the right hand side i have an option to create a volume over here if i click on this create volume now it's asking me for a volume name so let me say test volume okay and let me say this is my test volume and after that you can see that there is an option of volume type managed and external so i told you there are two types of volumes managed and external in the managed you don't have to provide any location because you are not referencing a storage location so if you are referencing a storage location if you have the files lying in a storage location and if you want to refer that then in that case you will use external volume 
if you use if you choose this external volume it is going to ask you for the path right it is going to ask you for the external location and the path location is nothing but your storage account and the path is again the path to your files within the storage account that is what external volume is all about but like now we are going to create the managed volume for external I'm going to create another video if you want you guys can also add a comment over here and let's hit on create now you can see you have successfully created test volume as the uh, volume within the uh, unity catalog now you can see this is the path now if you look at this this is the path so whenever you're going to refer to the volume you're always going to refer this particular path let me zoom it as well remember that this is the path that you are always going to choose and you can copy it as well from here now if you go to details it will tell you the volume type is managed what is the schema what is the catalog what is the name of your volume and even the storage location now look at here I have not provided any storage location but this storage location is my unity catalog meta store location okay so this is coming by default I have not added it this is just I am working in the unity catalog and this is unity catalog default meta store now in case you do not understand what is this unity catalog and all I do recommend watching my playlist on the unity catalog to understand this point so if I go to the permissions tab right this is where you can grant specific set of people or users access to your volume so now if I say this is my test volume let's say it has files related to the marketing and I want to grant access to it to the marketing team I can simply type in their email IDs which are integrated here or the groups which are integrated here and then I can apply these privileges whichever I want and I can simply grant them the privileges right so this is how exactly you can assign permissions as well so now if I go to the volume over here right this this is how the volume looks like now what is this volume all about this volume is nothing but you have to upload something you have to upload the file over here which can be structured or unstructured so now what you can do is you have an option to upload to this volume so if I click on this upload to this volume you can simply browse and upload the files so here from my system I have ex uh, I have uploaded an export.csv file and let me just simply click on upload so this is nothing but I'm uploading a file I'm uploading a file to my volume so this is the volume and this is my file export.csv so now we can do a lot of stuff with this export.csv which is uploaded to my volume of course permissions part we have already seen now we will see different features of uh, uh, of volumes so now if I go to this notebook and let me attach a cluster okay my cluster is up and running so it's fine so now you can see that I have mentioned here that volumes are available with percentage FS so whenever you are using percentage FS command you can use it to list whatever is present inside your volume so let me check what is the name of my volume that I have created it's a test volume let me copy the name of my volume and paste it here so this is nothing but this is the same path which I showed you over here right this is the path which you are always going to use to refer to your volume so now if you see here percentage FS LS and if I run this it is going to list me what all files are present so right now I am just referring I have just put one file over here so it is going to show me one file which is present inside this volume now similarly you can also see that I have also mentioned that any spark command right you can use any spark command in Python or SQL as well to understand what is present inside your volume so your first command of percentage FS is done you have export.csv which is present over here but now similarly here if I want to read a file so this is the name of my file which is export.csv and the name of my volume is test volume so I'm just renaming the path over here and even if I want to use a spark.read.csv and I mentioned the volume over here and the specific file which I want to read I can actually do it using uh, spark uh, uh, Python or uh, basically PySpark uh, or spark SQL I can do that I can I can use that to read this now similarly you will also see that okay this is the data which is present now the data is not important here the concept that we are trying to learn that is more important so now you can see that okay this is present over here now similarly as we move ahead volumes are also available locally in Python so let me just copy the path again because I have run it earlier on a different path so for you guys I'm rerunning it 
over here so just changing the path okay so now you guys can see what has happened here so volumes are also available locally in Python what does that mean so even if you are not integrating with spark so when I say spark so if you're not using uh, PySpark or you're not using Spark SQL, you're using pure Python, then also volumes can be used. So if you see, this is a pure Python piece of code. With open, you're trying to open this file and you're going to read the first line of this file. So the moment I run this, you can see that, okay, it has read the file. Even it is tightly integrated with your Python. Now, similarly, if you look at this, how you can integrate it in your project as well. So if you look at this, now, volume can be used to store an images for your machine learning or a deep learning model. Similarly, you can use a normal file as well and you can refer it. At the same time, uh, you can read that file and you can create a table out of that. You can read your volume and you can create a table out of that. Now here in this piece of code, what is happening? I'm using, I'm reading the volume over here. This is the volume that I have. Let me just uh, change the path. So this is the volume that I have, right? Now in this volume, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to read this volume using spark.readStream. So I'm using spark.readStream API and then I'm using autoloader. Right, my format is cloud files over here. So using the auto loader, in case you guys have not watched my video on auto loader, I do recommend watching it because it is really used in the industry. So now spark.readstream.format cloud files, which is nothing but auto loader. I'm reading this file, I'm reading this file, and then I'm loading. When I say load, what is happening? It is reading the file from my volume okay using the read stream and it is writing it to a table now this table is present in a different catalog catalog default test volume table now this table is actually not present but once I run this this table will be loaded so if I go to catalog over here and default you can see uh, there are six tables present over here right so now let's see our table when I run this so now if I go ahead and start running this So while this is running, I will actually go to the Catalog Explorer and I'm going to show you one more part. So if you go to this particular volume, let me in fact uh, minimize it. And if I go to the overview over here, right from this export.csv file, what you guys can do is you can also download this file. You can delete this file. You can copy its path and you can also click on create table. So when you click on create table, if I go to catalog, uh, or let me use the default uh, schema itself and let me name the table as export UI and you will actually see that you will be able to create a table like this as well your table export UI is being created so even from a volume which you have added a file may be structured or unstructured you can actually go ahead and you can see that your file got actually created over here so this is also one of the very good feature and similarly you can also see your test volume table has also been created in this which has taken the data from your cloud files using the auto loader it has taken the data from your volume over here incrementally you can run it I have run it once now the moment it has taken the data it has actually created a table over here and similarly from the UI also you can go ahead and create the table also the other thing that you can do is if you look at this right select you can also directly refer refer your volume so this is my volume which I have created right let me just recheck the name again if I go to my volume and this is my file so uh, okay, uh, not this one. I have created it in the quick start catalog dbt and here is my volume if I look at here This is my test volume that I have Created and if I go back if I want to read anything from my volume Can I do that? I can do it directly by using a SQL statement So if I go ahead and if I run it right select star from CSV dot because it's a CSV file and I, I give the path to my volume now two types of path you can provide you can provide dbfs colon and the whole path that we have copied from here right so now the moment you provide this path using a simple SQL statement you are able to query your file as well now similarly if you want to list 
right even that listing is possible let me put the name of my volume and even if you want to list uh, whatever is present in your volume using SQL you can do that in the same thing we did using percentage FS as well so like this even you know if you go to your SQL queries right there also you can simply do select star you can use the same SQL statement as you have mentioned over here so if I go ahead I, I see simply use this if I copy it and if I create a new query right and I can simply create a new query and run the same command to see what is present inside my volume so volumes are very good you guys can store your libraries you can store your intermediate files that you might be needing okay my serverless uh, 